Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor, and I thank Councillor Street for his contribution. This particular case, like many others like it, it brings, it brings me no joy because no matter which way a councillor falls in their judgment, they stand to upset one or more of the valued and important stakeholders. Uh, in this case, the subject lot that we're looking at at 361 Redwood Road, Kingston was created in 2014 under subdivision DAS 2012-14 with an area of 4,552 square metres, a little over an acre. And in 2014, a covenant was placed on this land to not remove any tree without the prior consent of Kingbrook Council and also to not uh, construct any habitable building or other structure. So immediately the key question that comes to mind is, are there any special circumstances here? Is there a need, for example, as um, in the provisions of the Local Government Building and Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1993, is there a need to bring the plan into conformity with the change in the rights and duties of landowners, for example? Uh, the suggestion here that's before us um, is, is to refuse the, um, the, sealed, uh, the sealed plan amendment. And the, the key questions here are, um, are about the, the construction of hab habitable dwellings or other structures. So to take us back into the, the history of this, um, when this subdivision was approved in 2014, uh, many of the current landowners purchased their lots in 2016 and then constructed dwellings in 2017 onwards. The original purpose of the covenant was, well, the, the condition required that the covenant provided for the protection of the residential amenity of the adjoining lots, as well as ensuring that the existing operations on the adjoining commercial lot to the north, AAD, were not compromised. The residential amenity to which this covenant referred was for the adjoining lots which have now been subsumed into lot 96. So in my mind, there's still an open question as to whether the protection for residential amenity for those adjoining lots extends to those lots owned by the respondents who oppose the am amendment to the sealed plan. However, um, some of the issues that were raised by respondents who did oppose this amendment on the, on the covenant have raised concerns that include issues relating to property value, noise and traffic. And it's worth noting at this juncture that the traffic assessment did not support the traffic concern and that it appears that there's little evidence to support that particular tra claim about traffic becoming a problem at this location. Uh, but it's worth noting that under the general residential current zoning, multiple dwellings can be approved with a minimum lot size of 325 square metres. So this lot in question being a little over an acre, in theory it is conceivable, albeit unlikely, that up to 13 units could fit on this lot that we're talking about. Much more likely that it would be less than 10 lots, but still it's worth considering. At the time of purchasing their lots, respondents were advised by real estate agents that the covenant uh, would mean that there would be no tree removal or construction of structures or habitable buildings on the lot in question. And I place significant weight on this aspect of the case. They selected their properties largely due to lot 96 being some kind of a buffer. Um, there's a quote in the report here that says, at the time of purchase, the agent specifically cited the covenant that was in place uh, as a selling point. Now, I want to make very clear that the reality is that this area is not, nor ever was, public open space. So that's important to point out. But an open question remains that if a covenant can be placed on a property in 2014 and then used as a selling point for adjoining lots, and then with the stroke of a pen can be removed six years later, what kind of for want of a better word, moral hazard, does that represent? If in a given municipality, covenants are removed haphazardly or nonchalantly under non-extraordinary circumstances for non-extraordinary purposes, does that not dilute the authority, the potency, the efficacy of all of the other covenants within the municipality? And I, I'm a little concerned about what signal it sends to both developers and households that if the council undermines the sternness of their covenants in their own jurisdiction by showing lenience in removal or amendment of covenants, I think that's kind of a thin end of the wedge kind of situation. And the question then becomes, does the draft part five agreement regarding an acoustic Time. barrier, can I have three more minutes? Need a, a mover and a second for that. Also move. Moved by Councillor Fox and second of Councillor Westwood. The motion is that uh, Councillor Cordova be given three additional minutes. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against? I should carry it against the court over three minutes. Thank you. I won't need that full three minutes. But um, the question about the noise is, is it sufficient reason to discharge the original intention of the covenant to provide for the protection of residential amenity to those adjoining lots? This question of noise and privacy. Now, following the first hearing, a report was prepared by Council's Planning Department which included a recommendation to refuse the amendment to the sealed plan on the basis that, quote, 
there is no significant change to the circumstances that existed when the covenant was originally created as part of the subdivision application. Subsequently, the addition of a draft part five agreement requiring the construction and maintenance of an acoustic barrier um, uh, has led, I guess, um, the uh, council planning staff to consider that enough has changed this time around to warrant the changing of the recommendation. This council will make its determination about the amendment of this sealed plan, not under LUPA, but rather under its head of power granted under the Local Government Building and Miscellaneous Provisions Act, sections 103 and 104. The council may amend a sealed plan on the application of any person having an interest in the land subject to the plan. So there's no question about whether or not council can amend the plan, of course, that's why we're here. But the question is, should we in this circumstance? Is the situation and circumstance special enough, extraordinary enough to warrant changing it? Any person affected by the proposed amendment may be heard in support or opposition, and council is charged with the responsibility to determine this matter on its merits. And the weight a councillor gives to a given aspect of this case will subjectively affect their determination on the merits of the proposed amendment to the sealed plan. Now, in this case, the weighting in the report, in the ori original report that we saw, places um, greater emphasis on, on privacy and noise, but doesn't place as much emphasis on some of the other issues which are, are brought before the report, which include um, surrounding property owners' interests, vegetation protection, and the risk of undermining the robustness of other covenants. So I've given this proposal a lot of consideration, and in my assessment, I don't agree with the recommendation to approve the request, and that's why I'm proud to second um, this motion that's before us now. Thanks. Councillor Grace. 